What's up everyone? Welcome to Growth Beans. I'm John Timmerman. Today we're going to talk about how to structure your marketing plan for the new year. So we're towards the end of 2019. A lot of you out there are figuring out what you're going to do next year. I'm gonna tell you how Good Monster structures our marketing plans in a pretty simple and easy way to at least start going down the road of making your marketing plan. What we do is we split it up into a ratio of 60-40. 60% of the efforts and budget and whatnot are spent into growing your brand. Okay, so those are things like storytelling, getting good sentiment, more of the feeling right? The emotion, that's the brand. You want to make sure people have an emotional connection with you and they trust you because that will make everything else from sales to your ROI driven marketing much, much easier easier. Without brand, you are climbing and clawing and scratching for every sale possible. And it's an area you don't want to get sucked into because that's how brands start to discount their products. They do more discounts. They do more sales to try to bring in that revenue. And that's a super slippery slope. A lot of you know that, right? So 60% is brand. 40% then are short-term campaigns, ROI driven strategies and tactics. We split it 60-40 to make sure that we're always focused more on the brand because as much as all of you out there need sales and want sales, and I totally get it, you are going down a slippery slope if you focus more on the ROI and less on the brand. It's an easy concept, but I understand it's very hard to grasp. So let's dive in a little bit deeper to some strategies for both in hopes that I can kind of convince you to focus a little bit more on brand and to use this to uh, build your marketing plan for next year. Okay, so first let's talk about the strategies for brand building versus more ROI driven marketing. So brand building, as I said, it's storytelling. No matter if you're B2B, you're in healthcare, you're in manufacturing, you're an e-commerce company selling sneakers, you need to tell stories that your customers, they resonate with in order to draw them in. If they don't understand you or you're not on their wavelength, you can't hope to get a sale from them. And if you do, it's probably one off and they're definitely not going to recommend you to friends and colleagues and family. So tell stories that they resonate with. Now it can be done in a few different ways. You can tell stories that are more aspirational stories. That's where you see celebrities and athletes and professional athletes come in as sponsor endorsing a product and telling their stories because that's something people aspire to be. They want to, they want to be like a LeBron James, you know, they want to be like Brad Pitt, you know, Johnny Depp in a cologne commercial, whatever it might be, right? People aspire to be Hollywood stars and athletes. Athletes. So that's more aspirational storytelling, more of motivational and inspiration. Another way to do storytelling is quite the opposite. Relate to them on their on the same exact level. Tell stories of people just like them going through the same struggles, enjoying the same things as they are, and they will it will build more social proof. So those are two types of stories that you can tell no matter what type of company you are in order to better connect with your potential customer and your audience, your target audience. This is the best way to go about building your brand. It can be done in a million different ways. You can tell a million different stories. I'm not going to get into that, but understand what your target audience, what do they hope? What do they dream about? What do they feel? What are their pain points? Address those in any ad campaigns that you put out there and you will succeed. I promise you. Now, understanding what those things are, that's a whole nother story. You need to research, research groups to do it and paid, you know, people to come in and test groups. Now you can run a simple Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, see how it does. And if it does really well, if it gets good engagement, then you can launch it on a larger scale across TV, billboards, you know, whatever it might be, right? So make sure you test what your customers hope, dream, and feel and what their pain points are, then tell stories on some level to connect with them. That's the way you're going to grow brand the quickest. Now on the flip side, let's look at the 40%. How do you generate ROI? So assuming you already have a brand or you're already telling stories that people can at least click through to see, they can go to your website, they can research who you are. It's something that they get and they understand, right? Well, the next strategies that you're going to want to focus on for ROI are digital. Digital 
digital is one of the best ways to track ROI. It's simply because you can measure clicks all the way through that you can't quite measure on billboards, you can't measure on radio, you can't measure on TV, because no matter how much these companies tell you, well, they have this viewership and they have this many views because the billboard is passed 250,000 times a day, you can't guarantee that they're actually looking at it, right? But if somebody clicks an Instagram ad, they then go to your website, you can measure that. If they then add a product to a cart, you can measure that. If they click to call you, you can measure that. If they fill out a form or to download a white paper, you can measure that, right? So the best way to measure return on investment and to spend that 40% in today's day and age is digital advertising because you can measure it. Measure your ad spend against your return on ad spend. And if you're e-commerce, it's incredibly easy. If you're B2B, it becomes a little bit harder and you have to integrate your sales team and your onboarding team to make sure they're reporting back a secured contract and the efforts that went into that, right? But it's measurable. So you wanna focus on social media advertising, platforms like LinkedIn, TikTok advertising, Snapchat advertising are, are all modern, uh, Instagram advertising, Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, Google ads. These are all very measurable and that's where you wanna focus on your ROI driven marketing. Now let's look at these 60, 40 in terms of speed. So your 60%, unfortunately, that's your long-term outlook. That's what you're trying to do over the next year. So your brand building budget, even though it's larger, it's going to take longer for you to notice a direct ROI. It's the storytelling. So you wanna measure your success here on the engagement. And I know there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of internet marketers out there that will tell you, you know, don't measure clicks and likes because it doesn't really matter. You need to get your sales. Well, that's for the 40%. For the 60%, you need to pay attention to engagement. You need to pay attention to shares. You need to pay attention to where your brand is mentioned on the internet. You need to pay attention to how your customers are responding. Your sales will increase with brand. I'm not saying it won't, but you need to measure the, the sentiment piece of it. You need to measure how people are feeling about your brand because that will lead to the sales. There's no way around it. Create a strong brand and the sales will come. So your long long-term outlook and what you should measure for brand is reach, views, shareability or shares and comments and measure it the entire year. You can measure week to week, you can measure month to month, but make sure it's consistently going up the entire year and I bet you your sales will go up with it. Even if you don't focus on this other 40% we're going to talk about in a minute. So the other 40%, that's your ROI. That is your digital advertising. That is your direct response. That's you put out $2,000 in an ad budget and you get back four, six, eight thousand dollars in return. Now this can be built on and as an extension of your 60% brand. You can even use the content that your the videos and the pictures and the images to run your ROI driven marketing. But the goal here is revenue. So your goal is not to as much, there's blurred lines, but it's not to get likes and shares and conversation going. It's not that. Your goal is to get sales. So this is where your Black Friday, your Cyber Monday, your Christmas, your Hanukkah, your New Year's, your veteran Day sales, your Memorial Day sales, your 4th of July sales. That's this bucket over here, this 40%. You want to plan that a year ahead. You want to plan product launches, service launches. You want to plan celebrity endorsements and any sales that they're going to do, influencers that you're going to partner with who are going to offer 20% off. Whatever it might be, that's this 40%. It's more direct response. You spend the money and in a month or two, you expect to get it back in sales right? This is quicker. This is something you can measure week to week, month to month, every three months, every six months, every nine months, every year, right? Brand takes a little bit longer. Direct ROI, direct response is measurable much quicker and brings you revenue much quicker. And the last thing I want to talk about that really falls in the 40% is marketplaces like Amazon.com, Walmart.com, uh, Jet.com, eBay. These platforms are true e-commerce platforms. People go shopping for price, product, knowledge, price shopping. They go there to buy things. So your brand, you can't really build a brand on these platforms. You can to a certain extent, you know, Amazon has brand pages and eBay has some similar things, but you can't really 
grow a brand. You can't really run ads that are building your brand in a true sense on these platforms. So this is another thing you want to drop in the 40% bucket is these e-commerce platforms. That being said, they are very valuable to drive revenue. I wanted to mention this because it might not be a 60-40 split in revenue that you get from these. I want to clear that up, right? So 60% of your efforts should be put into growing your brand, but you might get, I mean, there's companies that literally get 100% of their revenue from Amazon. Amazon, but they still have a brand on social media. So I don't want you to think 60% is going to come back to you in the in just from the brand stuff alone or that you're going to be able to measure it for, from that alone. It all goes together, but it really depends on your type of business. For, but if you're a consumer business, Amazon, eBay, Jet, those might drive a huge number of sales from all the brand work that you're doing. But the platform itself and any ads that you run on that platform or any SEO that you do on Amazon or eBay, that's dropped into the 40% effort bucket. So I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, so I hope that helps all of you understand at least how Good Monster approaches most of our marketing plans for our clients. I believe it can help you too if you're a CMO, a VP of marketing, a CEO, or a founder, and you're trying to design your own uh, marketing plan. Start with the 60-40 model. Of course, there's exceptions to the rule. There's 70-30, there's 50-50. It really depends on your business, but this is a good starting point if you've never developed a marketing plan before. Plan 60% of your budget and resources to grow your brand, to tell stories and to connect with people because it will make the 40% effort, which is more ROI direct response marketing much easier. And hopefully that 100% revenue number goes up next year. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time we do another episode of Growth Fiends. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. YouTube channel, search John Timmerman or click the link above. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I talk about marketing and business growth. And I have another show also called Brand Ed where we use real life examples of other brands doing great things and how you can apply that to your own business. We'll see you next time. It's winter. It's chilly in here in the office.